Biden's age has been in the news a lot lately, especially after a couple of videos of him staring off into space and looking generally confused went viral. Now, one of those videos was deceptively edited. For example, there's a video of him at the G7 summit seemingly wandering off until the Italian prime minister comes to get him. Now, the New York Post, of course, seized on that and called him the meander in chief. But if you zoom out or look at the video from a different angle, you can see that he's not wandering off or confused. He's just watching other skydivers and he's giving them the thumbs up. Now, there's another video of him on stage with Jimmy Kimmel and Barack Obama, where Obama comes to get him and usher him off the stage. But I don't really understand why this one is super controversial, because Jimmy Kimmel was also seemingly just staring off into space as well. But there's one last one that I saw that was making the rounds, and it was of Biden at a June celebration where everyone is you know kind of dancing and having a good time and he's just kind of standing there and even though he's trying to play it cool he low-key looks like he's dying and to be fair yeah he does look like he's dying in that video but he always looks like this because the man is a thousand years old he's decomposing before our very eyes that's what happens to all of us when we get to that age now despite the hysteria over those videos i do think it's clear to anyone with eyes that biden's brain is indeed cooked the same can also be said about donald trump sure because he's also really really old but trump has always been dumb as a rock so it's easier for americans to chalk his senior moments up to stupidity as opposed to senility because he's kind of always been that way you know, but without question, I think Trump is also in cognitive decline. For example, he literally forgot the name of his own doctor while boasting about how he aced his cognitive test and talked about how Biden should take a cognitive test. So, you know, it's funny as hell that he, of all people, is criticizing Biden. But since he still has a lot of energy as an old person, Americans might feel like it's not necessarily an age issue when he has a brain fart. You know, Trump is just a dumbass who says dumb things all the time. He said we should nuke hurricanes and in inject bleach. So him saying something dumb isn't necessarily going to spark the same criticism as it would if Biden said it. Because, you know, for Trump, you can chalk that up to stupidity. For Biden, you know, he wasn't necessarily always like this. So you chalk that up to old age. But it's clear that both candidates are obviously in cognitive decline. I think that's an undeniable fact of reality. With that being said, I don't actually care about their age. If anything, it's kind of a saving grace because most Americans want Biden and Trump to go away forever, and nature's going to inevitably sort that out for all of us very soon. I'm not trying to be crass. It's just a fact of reality. But to be clear, I don't dislike Biden because he's old. I dislike him because he's doing a genocide, right? I'll always prioritize policy over everything else. But I do care about age insofar as it becomes an electability issue, and it's obviously a political liability for Biden at this point. Anyone who pretends like that's not the case just isn't being honest. And there are Democratic Party hacks who try to pretend like he's not actually in cognitive decline. But that's disingenuous. It feels like you're trying to gaslight us. Americans can see that he's very clearly lost, you know, that pep in his step. So some commentators are trying to come up with solutions to address this problem, like Kathleen Parker of the Washington Post, who argues that Hillary Clinton could be of assistance when it comes to Biden's age issue. Now, whenever a journalist or a Democratic Party strategist suggests Hillary Clinton as a solution to any of the party's problems, I think you should immediately dismiss that person as a dumbass or assume that they're in cognitive decline because Hillary Clinton is an out-of-touch warmongering elitist who goes out of her way to spit in the faces of half of the Democratic Party. So if she wants to help, staying as far away from Democrats during election season as possible is the only way that she can possibly help. But when it comes to Biden's age problem, how exactly could Hillary Clinton, of all people, help in this regard? She's also old. Would they bring her on stage at events to be like, hey, look at how agile he is for his age. He's much more, you know, agile and energetic than my husband, Bill Clinton, who's also 1000 years old. I mean, what role could she play? Well, Kathleen is going to argue that Democrats should actually replace Kamala Harris with Hillary Clinton in order to ameliorate concerns about Biden's age. Let that sink in for a moment. In other words... Swap out the one young person with an old lady, and that's going to solve 
Biden's age issue. I'm not making this shit up. So let's dive into the article a little bit here so we can hear out Kathleen. She writes, inarguably, a significant obstacle to a Biden win is Kamala Harris, whose low popularity has not been improved by her lackluster performance as vice president. More independents and disenchanted Republicans might swing for Biden if it weren't for the prospect of a President Harris. That's wishful thinking. Not because of her sex, race, or any other demographic category, but because of her competency or lack thereof. I'm not alone in suggesting that Biden replace Harris, perhaps in exchange for a key role in his administration, serving as attorney general at least would be in her wheelhouse. Several alternative candidates have been suggested, including Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, Illinois Senator Tammy Duckworth, and, needless to say, Taylor Swift. Kidding, though her outspoken contempt for Trump isn't nothing. So, kidding but not kidding? Seriously? Uh, No one has mentioned her as a possible running mate for Biden, as far as I know. But why not replace Harris with Clinton? At 76, she might want no part of it, but it's hard to retire when you feel your job isn't done. It's not narcissism, it's that she feels this obligation to the country. Fuck off. If Biden needs to step down, even those who didn't vote for Clinton would have confidence in her ability to keep the country on track. It's just the thought, but worse ideas have been met with regrettable success. Oh, it's just the thought. Let me write it down in this multi-thousand word essay about why it's a great idea but at least she's aware enough to know that people are going to think this is a bad idea because it's a bad idea and not just a bad idea perhaps one of the worst ideas ever and the fact that you thought that this was a good idea kathleen makes me wonder if you're in cognitive decline hell after reading this i feel like i'm in cognitive decline because the logic here is deeply idiotic I'm no Kamala fan, but you're scapegoating her for Biden's age issue because apparently Biden dying while in office is such a scary prospect because it will lead to Kamala as VP that that's why people don't want to vote for Biden. But then you recommend the one person that perhaps is more hated than Kamala Harris in the entire country, Hillary Clinton. This strategy makes no sense. It sounds like you're just a Hillary Clinton sycophant. But then you're like, no, I'm going to try to find some way to intellectualize this and strategize and put this in an op-ed. Amazing. Amazing. Listen, I won't pretend like Biden's age isn't an issue that's hurting him because it is. But I don't necessarily think that that's why he's polling so poorly. He was still old as shit in 2023 when he was leading. So I don't necessarily think that voters are abandoning him because they're suddenly more concerned about his age, even if it is increasingly more of an issue. I think the issue here and why he's losing in particular, especially with young people, is because they're outraged because he's supporting a genocide. He was winning before he started supporting a genocide, and now he's losing after he's supporting a genocide and refuses to stop supporting a genocide. I feel like it's pretty simple. Why are we overcomplicating this? And I don't think that young people are anti-Biden because he's old. I think that the people who supported him in 2020 aren't supporting him this time because of his support for genocide. I really do think that it's that simple. At least it explains, I think, the lion's share of support that he's lost since 2020. Now, I've played this clip on the show before, but it's worth watching again because it highlights Biden's main issue in the most concise way imaginable. So this is CNN's Harry Enson explaining why Biden is polling so goddamn poorly. America's support for Israel is, now this is among 2020 Biden voters who are currently not voting for him. So it's those dislike, those disapprovals. Take a look here. Do you believe that America's support for Israel is too much? The clear majority, 60% of those folks who are currently not voting for Biden, but the last time around, say that America's support for Israel is too much. Just 24% say about right. You get this 4% who say not enough, but this group, is double the size of the about right and not enough combined. And a lot of those folks at this particular point aren't necessarily going for Donald Trump. They're going for RFK. I got to say that not enough is virtually nothing here. In, in general, what is Biden's support among those who were with him before? Yeah, this, I think, is the key point. Biden versus Trump 2024 poll margin. The reason Trump's ahead, he's holding on to more of his base right now. That 2020 voters leading by 81 points. Biden's just holding on, winning among that group by 73 points. That's the story of this election. It's why Trump is in much better position than he was four years ago. That's the story of the election. Now, I don't think that those people will end up voting for RFK Jr. because he's a clown who's perhaps more enthusiastic about Israel's genocide in Gaza than Biden. So I think that a lot of those people are either going to stay home 
or just vote third party. Now, other polls show that this change is being driven by young people, but media pretends to be confused about why young people are abandoning Biden. And I don't know why they don't just talk to young people, but whenever they do talk to young people, they get young people that aren't representative of the average young person. For example, The Hill published this op-ed by a young person who says that they voted for Biden in 2020, but they're not supporting him this time. And they argue that young people like him are abandoning Biden over concerns about immigration and the federal debt while simultaneously chastising Biden for not doing enough about climate change. He also criticizes Biden, get this, for failing to codify abortion rights and same-sex marriage. But to that I say, hey, dumbass, were you not paying attention when Biden did the thing that you say he didn't do? He literally codified same-sex marriage. He signed the Respect for Marriage Act into law. It was a compromise. It's not as good as Obergfell v. Hodges, but in the event Obergfell is struck down by the Supreme Court, same-sex marriages aren't going to suddenly be dissolved. So you can criticize him for not fighting hard enough to codify Roe v. Wade, but you should give him credit for codifying same-sex marriage rights because he did that. The fact that this article was published kind of goes to show you that the standards at the Hill are pretty low, but the Hill is owned by a right-wing rich person. So I think that they want to communicate to people that Biden is losing young voters because he's just gone too far to the left. So if you can find this young person who voted for Biden, but now is saying all these right-wing things about immigrants and the federal debt, then, you know, maybe that should help push Biden to the right. I don't know what the logic is, but this is a, it, this is a stupid fucking article, right? And when it comes to climate change, I, I agree that Biden isn't doing enough to fight climate change. He's done more than other presidents, but yes, it's not enough. But you can't criticize Biden for not doing enough about climate change while simultaneously bitching and moaning about the federal debt. You have to pick one because we're going to have to rack up a lot of debt to fight climate change. And eventually those investments are going to pay off in the future. But in the meanwhile, we're going to accumulate debt investing in clean, green, renewable technology. But I mean, the article isn't representative of the average young person. I don't hear any young people bitching about immigrants or the debts. The average young person isn't suddenly abandoning Biden because they've been duped by right-wing propaganda about the border or this invasion. I mean, this image of a young person that's being portrayed by the media is so frustrating because it's pretty clear. Like, it's not rocket science. The reason why young people are abandoning Biden is because they want the genocide to stop. They care deeply about this issue. Yes, they do want more progressive economic policies, and they want more humane immigration policies, like the one that Biden signed that does offer a pathway to citizenship for immigrants and dreamers married to U.S. citizens. I think that's great. You know, it doesn't undo the harm caused by his racist policy that he signed recently that illegally denies asylum to migrants. But, you know, that's something that he still deserves credit for. But Biden having an open border, that's not why young people are abandoning him. At the end of the day, one of the most salient issues to young people is Gaza. There's a lot of things that they care about. But right now, first and foremost, Gaza is at the top of their minds because we're witnessing a genocide. Period. And until that stops, I don't think that Biden is going to win back the young people that he lost. Now, a lot can change between now and November. He could get a bump due to GOP opposition to abortion and contraception and IVF. And look, maybe enough new young people registered to vote for him this time that weren't old enough to vote in the last election. There's a lot of factors, right? But ultimately, this election is going to come down to the same thing that always determines elections. How many young people have Democrats mobilized? How many new voters have they signed up to vote? That's what it's always going to come down to. And I don't think that Biden's age is what's keeping him down. It's hurting him, sure. But ultimately, that's not going to be the ultimate decider of the election. Getting people out is going to be what determines how successful he is, right? I don't think that his age is hurting him as much as his support for genocide is hurting him. So this conversation by the media, I feel like it is disingenuous because it sidesteps one of his biggest issues. So they're fixating on his age and they think that that's the reason why people aren't supporting him. But I mean, we get it. He's old. No shit. But voters didn't seem to care about his age that much in 2020 or even 2023. And I don't think that people are suddenly going to care the most about his age because Republicans shared a couple of videos where he looks confused. He's old. We all know that he's old and in cognitive decline. That's just a fact of reality. But I think a lot more people 
care more about the policy and the genocide than they care about his age, right? And I think a lot of people would be inclined to vote for him again and to come out and support him if he wasn't supporting this genocide. You know, you, you, you know, you know the, you know the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.